Allah the Exalted, the Almighty, says in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ And your Lord creates what He wills and He chooses. And Allah Azza wa Jal chose Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of his creation, to be his final message, messenger for the final message, the final divine message he sent down to humanity. And Allah also chose the companions of Muhammad from amongst all humans to be the best to follow, to take from him, to, to, to learn from him and to convey on his behalf the message of Allah to those who came after them. They were an exceptional generation. They were very keen on implementing and applying everything they heard, everything they saw, and every quality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the most distinct qualities of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was generosity. Ibn Al Qayyim Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, one of the most distinct or features of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was generosity and spending for him, for him was dearer than anything else. He was happier in spending than the person receiving the charity himself. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And whenever he saw anyone in need, he would favor him over himself, sometimes with food, sometimes with clothes, and so on and so forth. And he used to encourage and teach the companions to spend by words and actions. And the companions were the best students learning from the best teacher, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they learned the lesson. They were unique as a role model in this quality. But why did they spend? They spent because they heard words like, if I had the size of Mount Uhud in gold, and if any of you have been to Medina and spun around Mount Uhud, it takes about 15 minutes by car to spend around it as huge as that mountain is. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I had the size of Mount Uhud in gold, I would not like that three days would pass with me having a single golden coin in my possession, except something I would save to pay off a debt I would have on me. And this is in the book of Al-Bukhari. When words like this were said, you saw the companions, males and females alike, hasten to imitate the Prophet That's why Al-Bukhari reports that Aisha radiallahu anha, whenever she received anything, she would spend it for the sake of Allah. She would not keep anything to herself. Al-Bukhari also reports on the authority of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He said, Abu Talha was one of the richest residents of Medina, of Al-Ansar. And one of the best of his wealth was a garden called Bayruha. Bayruha was a garden that was immediately facing the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet وسلم, many times used to go in and drink water, cool water from the well of that uh, garden. So when the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, 
لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون when this was revealed to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu talha went to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam immediately and he said oh messenger of allah allah the almighty revealed this verse and he recited it and the dearest of my wealth to my heart is this garden bayruha and it is from now a charity for the sake of allah so you decide how you want to spend it so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in astonishment bakhin bakh bakh is a term used in arabic to reflect astonishment and amazement The Prophet ﷺ was taken by this generosity, this noble student. He said, I heard what you said about it. Before that, he said, Indeed, this is a profitable wealth, meaning that you spent. He repeated this twice, and then he said, I heard what you said. And I see that you divided amongst your relatives, so he did. Why did they spend? They spent because they were certain of the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, and this is a Qudsi narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah the Almighty said, Ya ibn Adam, anfiq, unfiq alayk. O son of Adam, you spend and I will spend on you. Then you, that this is a promise and they were certain that Allah's promises are always fulfilled and therefore they hastened without hesitation and reluctance why did they spend they spent because they feared the warnings the stern warnings of those who withhold and do not spend In the book of Imam al-Bukhari, Abu Dharr al-Ghifari radiyallahu anhu said, I walked to the Prophet sallallahu one day and he was leaning in the shade of the Kaaba. And he said, O oh Abu Dharr, I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba, they are indeed losers. Now, the companions were keen on learning Everything that will protect them from the wrath of Allah, from loss, from failure, as well as learning what brings them closer to Allah. So Abu Dhar said, I was about to leave, so I couldn't. I sat down and I said, may my father and mother be sacrificed for your sake, O Messenger of Allah. Who are these? Who are you talking about? Who are these utter losers? He said, those with the most wealth. Those who possess wealth. But then he said, except. Not all of them. He ex exempted one quality or one category of people. He said, except for those who spent their money from before them, behind them, on their right and on their left. Meaning, spend in all directions. But then he said, but very few, very little are such people. When they hear something like this, they become scared. They fear this warning. They fear the warning given to Asma'a. Bint Abi Bakr, radiyallahu anha wa an abiha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari as well. He said, O Asma, spend. Spend and do not hold back. Otherwise, Allah will hold back from you. These warnings were very scary, and therefore, the companions were very keen to act against it, against what makes them losers, 
what makes them deserving of Allah Azza wa Jal holding back and depriving them from His provision. Why did they spend? They spent because the Prophet ﷺ taught them that spending is a sign of sincere faith and true faith. In the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, As-Sadaqatu Burhan. Spending charity is proof. Ibn Hajar said, it is proof of sound faith. We ask Allah Azza wa to make our faith sound and sincere for His sake. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Why did they spend? They spent because they were keen on collecting and accumulating the largest amount of reward they could. When they hear something like the following hadith which is reported by Muslim when the Prophet ﷺ said, He who guides to virtue will get the same reward of those who do it. They were certain that people of knowledge will come on the day of judgment with the reward of teaching knowledge and spreading knowledge. And those who prayed would come on the day of judgment with the reward of their prayers. And those who fasted would come on the day of judgment with that amazing reward set by Allah Azza wa for those who fast. But they were also certain that those who spent in charity will come having collected all of these rewards. How? They help in spreading that knowledge with their wealth. Publish a book, for example. They will come having accumulated the reward of all of those who prayed, building a masjid. They will come having accumulated all the reward of those who fasted, feeding a person for uh, iftar when he breaks his fast. They would come with their own reward in addition to all of these rewards. And therefore, they competed in that. But this, meaning spending right, left, and center, is not something that just anyone can do. It's a favor from Allah Azza wa Jal, with whom He blesses those who work for it and deserve it. They spent in feeding because they heard that the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, in Jannah, there will be rooms that are transparent, pure, to the extent that the inside of it will be seen from the outside and the outside will be seen from the inside. High ranks, high rooms, Allah Azza wa Jal has set in Jannah. They said, for whom? He said, for those who feed others, who give food as charity. Why did they spend? in Ramadan in particular, because they saw that this quality of the Prophet ﷺ was at its peak during Ramadan. As Ibn Abbas said, reported in, by Al-Bukhari, he said the Prophet ﷺ was the most generous of people, but during Ramadan he used to spend faster than a strong blowing wind. So they tried to imitate him. When they heard him say, Whoever gives a fasting person something to break his fast with, 
will get the same reward as that person who fasted. Without that diminishing any of their rewards. This is reported by Ahmed, classified as authentic by Albani. So they hastened. And finally, why did they spend? Why did they continuously spend? Because they knew that spending in charity is not a one-time deal. It's a daily perpetual task. Based on what? Based on the saying of the Prophet وسلم, which is reported by Al-Bukhari. He said, every new sunrise, that is every day. So it's a daily issue. Two angels descend. One of them says, Oh Allah, bless the wealth of the person who spends. So we get the reward of the supplication of angels who do not dis disobey. They were not created to disobey, so they cannot even disobey. They don't have that will. It's not in them. So they will be supplicating for us. But what would the second one say? Allahumma a'ti mumsikan talafa. Or Allah ruin the wealth of the person who doesn't spend. So they knew that it's not a one-time issue. It's not a one-time matter. It's something that's continuous. It's got to become a default trait in me in order to fulfill true and sincere faith to Allah. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless us with sincere hearts and truth faith, true faith. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin.